situation. But now what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of go through a guided prayer with you guys. Um, this is going to be less of a teaching and more of let's, I'm just going to, I got one, two, three, four, five. I got six little passages of scripture with me. Um, and, and I'm just going to read it out loud and you guys can flip there, turn there or, or, or jot these passages down to revisit later. But the whole idea for the next several minutes is let's just kind of pray through these passages. Um, let's meditate on, let's soak in and pray through, uh, these passages and, and kind of the idea behind this prayer behind this time, um, is to recognize the present of God's presence in the present. Kind of a weird way of phrasing it, but the present, right? The gift, the grace of God's presence in the present, wherever you're at, wherever you're at physically, wherever you're at emotionally, wherever you're at mentally, wherever you're at, and and the challenges of kind of socially, like where we're at in this social distancing thing, like wherever you're at, we can acknowledge the present, the gift of God's presence in the present. So these passages really focus on the presence of God, uh, the nearness of God, and the spirit of God. Uh, and so let's, let's just read these passages and let's, let's pray through these things and let's make these passages our prayer. The first one is in Psalm 23. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to go there if, if you guys have your Bibles. Uh, Psalm 23, verses 4 and 5. Yeah, let's, let's pray through these passages. David writes that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And God, right now, as we just pray through these passages, passages, we thank you that though we may walk through valleys, through hardship, through stretching or difficult times that you are with us. And so there is no need to fear. God, in the midst of wherever we're at and whatever we're going through, whatever the specific challenges or doubts or insecurities or fear may arise, you are with us and your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Your rod of teaching and correction and your staff of grace are with us. God, that even in the midst of our enemies, even in the midst of evil, even in the midst of hardship, even in the midst of brokenness, that you sometimes don't take us out of the situation, but instead you prepare a table before us in the midst of our enemies. God, whatever our enemy might be, Whatever opposition and hardship we may feel, sometimes you don't take us out of the presence of our enemies, but instead you prepare a table in their presence that we may learn how to receive from you, how to depend on you. God, that you prepare a table in the midst of our enemies, that, that in the midst of difficulty and opposition, that, that we are feasting and communing and getting all that we need from you. The next passage is Psalm 139, 7 through 12. David writes, Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light be, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night 
is bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. For darkness is as light with you. And God, we just acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your faithfulness. God, that whether we feel like we're in the heavens or whether we feel like we're in Sheol, our, our mountaintop experiences are walking through the valley, our good days or our bad days, our victories and what seems like defeats, God, that you are with us. No greater gift do we have than the gift of your presence, that you are with us. God, whether it be daytime or nighttime, whether it be in the light or whether it be in the darkness, that even the darkness is as light to you, that you see us. And there may be even within us some dark thoughts, some dark fears, some dark doubts, and you don't get caught up in the darkness because the darkness is as light as light is to us. That is how darkness is to you. And so you see past, you see through the darkness, you see through the frail thoughts and the fleeting thoughts and the fears and the doubts and the darkness that we have. You see through those things and you see our hearts. And God, you minister to our hearts. That you remind us of who you are and how you are faithful. The next passage is in John chapter 16, verse 7. Jesus is, is about to ascend. Um, actually, even before that, like he, he's about to, to die, resurrect, and then ascend. But, but he promises a wonderful promise, a wonderful gift. Jesus says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. <sighs> Nevertheless, I tell you, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Let's pray through that. Jesus, we thank you that that you went to the cross, that you hung on the middle cross, that you who knew no sin became our sin so that we may become the righteousness of God, that God, you, Jesus, you defeated sin, you defeated death when you rose from the grave. Therefore, there's forgiveness of sins and there's freedom from sin in you, Jesus. And, and you ascended into heaven and, and though you aren't, physically walking around among us, that you are still among us, but in spirit form, that you have sent your spirit to dwell in the heart of every believer. God, that, that you, aren't, you aren't refined and limited to physically being at one place at a time, but, but God, you dwell across the whole globe because you make your home in the heart of every believer. God, that, that there is greater presence, that there's greater access, that there's greater availability, that there's greater service, that there's greater proof that you are in this world because you aren't walking around uh, in, in, in one place at a time in the Middle East. No, you, you are everywhere. Your presence is here because you make your home in the heart of every believer, God, we thank you for your spirit that you've sent. Jesus, it's hard to believe that it was better for you to go so that the helper would come. And, and I'm sure that that was a statement that your disciples had a hard time understanding and processing. But God, we thank you for this promise, Jesus. We thank you for your accomplishment on the cross and your death and resurrection and ascension. And even though you are in the right hand of the Father, your spirit still is with us. You are with us. 
in our heart, in our spirit, as your spirit fills our heart that, that you are with us because your spirit is with us. God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that that is the seal of our salvation and the promise of your nearness. Thank you so much for the deposit of our hope and glory and riches in you, the deposit of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Acts 2.17 uh, Luke is... is this is all of Luke's recording through eyewitnesses and also him traveling with the disciples, the apostles, the believers. Luke makes sure to write in Acts uh, 2.17 that after Peter and the, and the apostles were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit that had tongues of fire above their heads and speaking in other languages um, <laughs> to communicate to all sorts of people that were entering and traveling into Jerusalem at the time, hearing in their own language the fulfillment, the promises, the power, the person of Jesus and what he's done. Um, after even some people were accusing, like, what, hold on, you don't even, what's going on? You're speaking a different language? Are you drunk? And Peter's like, no, it's, it's morning. Like we're not drunk. <laughs> it's the morning time. Actually, this is what, this is what has been promised. This is, this is a, a fulfillment of prophecy, a fulfillment of God's promise to us. And this is where Peter preaches. He says, referring to a past promise and, and prophecy, he says, and in these last days, it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. I love this, that, that back in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, though the Holy Spirit was active and present and real and, and engaged in human activity with his divine activity, that the Holy Spirit's role even looked differently in the Old Testament, that he would rest and fill and be appointed to empower certain individuals, kings, leaders, priests, those who had a specific task that they needed to fulfill. God would bless him with the empowerment of, the, of his spirit. And now, as a seal of this new era, this new way of living, this new covenant, the era of grace, the era of entering into the finished work of Jesus, the Holy Spirit now pours out himself upon all of the church. That it's whoever believes, whoever believes, whoever believes that it's all flesh. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you have a significant status here on earth or whether you don't, whether you are in power or whether you are lowly, whether you are uh, a leader or whether you are a servant, like it doesn't matter who you are, or whether you are sophisticated or whether you just feel ordinary, like whatever you may feel like you are today, you believe in Jesus, you have the gift of his presence with you, that it is unearned, unmerited, undeserved grace that is yours through faith in Jesus. And I, I just love this. So let, let's just thank God for the pouring out of his spirit. God, we thank you, God, that it doesn't mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not about what we have done. It, it isn't about our achievements. It, it, it isn't about our meriting. It isn't about our earning. It isn't about our status or reputation or our significance or our achievements. But God, it is by your love and by your grace that we are who we are. It is through the finished work of Jesus, your grace, God, that our faith is simply accessing and operating and embracing what has already been done for us. And God, I love that you pour out your spirit upon all flesh, God, that that we don't have to meet any prerequisite to have your spirit in us, God, that you are near to us, that you are with us, that you are for us, that your spirit is made available for all people. And, and I love that even in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, it says that no one can say that Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. God, Holy Spirit, before you even make your home in the heart of every believer, you are actively involved, even leading, softening, 
teaching, revealing the fact that Jesus is Lord to people and that it isn't even in our own power that we can acknowledge Jesus that you are Lord without the help, the assistance, the activity, the engagement, and the power of the Holy Spirit helping us even see the fact that you are Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are the life giver, that you in us are the curse reverser, that you are the chain breaker, that you give us power and gifts to be able to carry the service of the gospel to people that we are able to serve and love and minister to people. We thank you, God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, that you are near to us. You are in us. As Paul says in Galatians, here's the mystery that Christ lives in us. That you are Emmanuel, God with us. God, I just... I just ask that like you interrupt our, our religious duties, that you disrupt our religious mindset, that, that it's about doing these things, it's about being good Christians, it's about reading enough and memorizing enough and doing enough and learning enough and achieving enough, that, that God, it isn't about that. Like Our life, our existence, our purpose, it's all about you. Jesus, I love that even after you rose from the grave, that what you chose to do to the disciples <laughs> that were walking the road to Emmaus, that what you chose to do to the disciples that were in the upper room, that you actually chose to reveal to them, to open their minds about how everything that was written in the law and the prophets were all about you. And God, I just ask that whatever we do, that, that you just help break through the mindset of it's up to us to do and, and that you usher in a fresh life-giving perspective that it's all about you. God, I'm sorry for singing songs of worship and actually just going through the motions instead of singing to you. God, I'm sorry of when it comes to when I preach and when I lead Bible studies that that I think to myself, well, I better come across as educated. I better come across as an eloquent speaker. I better come across as a good leader. God, I'm sorry that for these moments that I even make it about me at all. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. And maybe this is this is part of this slowing down of our jobs, of our rhythms and routines, of the pace of life, of entering into the protocols of social distancing, like it's forcing us to slow down a bit. And maybe you're helping us slow down a little bit to realize it it's all about you. It's all about you. Uh the last passage I just want to uh, read is, is this, Matthew 28, 20. Uh, as Jesus ends his great commission, he says this, And behold, I am with you, even until the end of the age. And shortly after Jesus said that, he ascended, and so he actually left. But when Jesus says, I am with you always, he was referring to his disciples having the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus living in them. And I just want to encourage you that no matter where you're at, again, spiritually or emotionally, mentally, physically, Jesus is with you always. He's with you always. And that sometimes some of the problems in our lives, some of the, the hardships in our lives and some of the difficulties in our lives Though God doesn't love to see pain in our lives, he's so good, he works through pain. And maybe some of the purpose of the pain and God being in it is to show you that he's always with you. When things are going our way, when things are going according to our plan, oftentimes it's so easy 
to forget God. But when things hit the fan, <laughs> when things become challenging, when we are actually becoming weak at the knees and we fall to our knees, the sweetest, most, most empowering place we could ever be in is saying, Jesus, you are all I have. And that in actually realizing that you are all I have, I realize that you are all I need. Um, when we enter into glory, when we see Jesus face to face, um, we're not We're not going to be thinking about our achievements. We're not going to be thinking about everything that we did. Because we're going to be face to face with Jesus. We're going to see Jesus face to face. That his beauty and his radiance and his glory and his love and his light will be so amazing as we be, as we will be in his presence. We're not going to think about all these different things that honestly merited our attention and creeped its way into our schedule and all of a sudden climbed its way up our priorities. That at the end of the day, it's about Jesus. And I want to live out that heavenly reality of being in the midst and the presence and the glory of Jesus. I want to live that out here on earth. <laughs> We're in it. We're in the world. But I'll, I don't want to be of it. I want to be so full. So aware of the presence, the goodness of Jesus. It's all about him. Um, and so I, I hope that through the Psalms and through the Gospels and through uh, Acts and, and, and through First Corinthians, that you guys are just encouraged that we've prayed through this uh, time and, and through these passages. And uh, just know that God is near you, that God is with you, that he loves you. And that as Jesus prayed to God saying, Abba, Daddy, Father, that we can say Abba to God, that he loves us, that, that he's with us, that we are his kids. So let's go from this place today, recognizing that he is with us. He is near to us. He is our Abba, our Dada, our Father. This is all possible because Jesus did for us what we were unable to do for ourselves. It brings us into an intimate relationship with Daddy. So I love you guys. This is just so good. Like this is this is the gospel. I just pray that we are encouraged and renewed and refreshed today and that we have the eyes to see his faithfulness. Love you guys so much. Have a blessed day. Continue to see those blessings in disguise because he is with us. Love you guys.